ഓം ശാന്തി പ്ലസ് ആൻഡ് ഗുഡ് ഈവനിങ് വെൽക്കം ടു സൺഡേ ഈവനിങ് ടോക്ക് ഇൻ ദിസ് ബ്യൂട്ടിഫുൾ പവർഫുൾ പ്രമേസസ് ശാന്തി സരോവർ അക്കാഡമി ഫോർ എ ബെറ്റർ വേൾഡ് ഐ എം ഷ്യൂർ ഓൾ ഓഫ് യു ആർ എക്സ്പീരിയൻസിങ് ദ റേസ് ഓഫ് പീസ് ഷവർ ഓഫ് പീസ് വൈബ്രേഷൻസ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് പീസ് ആൻഡ് ഹാപ്പിനെസ് ഇൻ ദീസ് ടു ഡേയ്സ് ബിക്കോസ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എ ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഓണർ ആൻഡ് പ്ലെഷർ ടു ഹാവ് സിസ്റ്റർ ജയന്തി വിത്ത് അസ് ഫോർ ദീസ് ഷോർട്ട് ബ്രേക്ക് ആക്ച്വലി ഇൻ ഹൈദരാബാദ് ബട്ട് ദറ്റ് ഈസ് ഓൾസോ വെരി ഗ്രേറ്റ് സോ ദിസ് ഈവനിങ് വി ഹാവ് വെരി മച്ച് പ്രിവിലേജ്ഡ് വെരി മച്ച് ഓണർഡ് ടു ഹാവ് ജയന്തി ദീദി ജി സ്പെഷ്യലി ഫ്രം ലണ്ടൻ ഷി ഈസ് വിത്ത് അസ് she has actually come for juris conference which happened this morning actually whole day conference from morning to evening and we sunday evening talk whoever attend every every week we all got this special opportunity to listen to didi and experience that shower of peace so let's welcome jayanti didi on to the dais with round of applause how many of you are seeing first time for jayanti didi first time physically but in tv sent in youtube many of you know her otherwise you would have heard her also um so this evening we are specially blessed to have didi and didi is uh, the european director of brahma kumaris centers she is the director of 28 countries in european union as well as in middle east and many other countries she is representative of uh, brahma kumaris in united nations geneva for over 45 years didi has been an emissary for peace she has a vision and experience that is truly global and deeply spiritual Didi has a unique ability to impart the deepest spiritual truths within the utmost with the utmost clarity many of you have experienced this clarity part from didi um, especially since yesterday those who are attending these sessions you all experienced what her power is what her quality is and her role in the university is very broad as european director she looks after many countries and travels the whole world as a keenly sought after speaker and broadcaster and she has visited whole world recently she has headed the bk delegation to the current series of united nations climate change conferences in copenhagen mexico durban doha and in paris and maraka Uh, has spoken internationally on the spiritual perspective of climate change so it's really really blessed all of us today to listen to didi on the topic which topic we all want which topic um healing energy of compassion yes so we have kuldeep didi with us who is the director of brahma kumaris centers in hyderabad as well as shanti sarovar she will welcome jayanti didi as well as all of us also i first welcome kuldeep didi and brother kc jain will welcome with flower of bouquets jis kisi ko hindi ka translation chahiye wo aapke fm radio se 90 tune karenge to aapko hindi translation milega hum sabhi ke taraf se abhi के सी जैन भाई सब दीदी को वेलकम कर रहे हैं हम सब साथ देंगे अपने वाइब्रेशंस के साथ अभी हम सब इंस्पिरेशन व वेलकम कुलदीप दीदी से सुनेंगे ओम शांति 
परम आदरणीय वंदनीय हमारी मीठी मीठी जयंती दीदी हम सब के लिए बहुत दूर देश से एक सुंदर मैसेज लेकर हैदराबाद पधारे हैं हम सबका ये सौभाग्य है कि ऐसी सर्वश्रेष्ठ आत्मा महायोगिनी महातपस्विनी जिन्होंने अपना जीवन हमारे एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव हेड दादी जानकी जी के साथ व्यतीत किया है बचपन से उनकी पालना में रह कर के जो वैल्यूज़ हमारी दादी जी में हैं उन वैल्यूज़ को लेकर के दीदी ने पूरे विश्व में उसको स्प्रेड किया हमारे जैसी अनेक बहनों को उन्होंने अपने आदेश निर्देश के द्वारा बहुत सुंदर जीवन प्रदान किया अनेकों का जीवन बनाने की कला है हमारी दीदी में बहुत ही स्वीट और सरल स्वभाव के हैं जहाँ भी जाते हैं हर एक के साथ एडजस्टमेंट और इतना लाइट जैसे कि एक एंजल है अवतार की तरह आते हैं और बहुत थोड़े समय के लिए अवतार आते हैं अपना संदेश देते हैं और विश्व का कल्याण करते हैं और अवतार अपने स्थान पर चले जाते हैं तो हमारे लिए भी तेलंगाना में दीदी का अवतरण हुआ है क्योंकि तेलंगाना स्टेट बनने के बाद पहली बार ही हमारी दीदी यहाँ अवतरित हुए हैं तो उनका हम तेलंगाना स्टेट में तेलंगाना गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से हम सब की तरफ से हम करतल ध्वनि से दीदी का बहुत 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 अभिनंदन करते हैं आप सब भी जो सभा में भाई बहने आए हैं कुछ भाई बहने एवरी संडे आते हैं कुछ पहली बार भी आए होंगे आप सबको भी बहुत बहुत हार्दिक स्वागत है आज की शुभ संध्या आपके जीवन में एक नया मोड लाएगी ऐसी आशा से मैं आप सबको ये आश्वासन देती हूँ दीदी की प्रेरणाएँ आप लेकर जाएंगे तो आपका जीवन बहुत सुंदर सदा खुश रहने की कला आप सीख कर जाइए ओम शांति ओम शांति Good evening. When we hear the word compassion, what does it do for you? I'm sure that even just simply hearing that word allows your heart to be wider and more open, and your feelings to melt a little. Is that right? And yes, it has within itself this word passion. but it means that it's passion to be able to serve passion to be able to help others and so normally when we talk about passion and we say my passionate interest is in this and this and this then it's very much motivated for what it is i like and what i want but when we say compassion then it's really being motivated to be able to serve others with love with sincerity from the heart and whenever there have been examples in history of people who've been able to do this we remember them for a very long time and in recent times of course mother teresa has been an amazing example for many many of us but it's also interesting to note that many people who have served with compassion with love the motivation started with love for god because when you experience love for god or even more than that love from god for yourself then this allows something to open up within the self in which you're able to serve others with great love also and definitely if there's a quality that's needed in the world today i would say it's compassion why because when we look at the divide between people 
the huge, huge gap there is between those who have and those who have not. Um, the strange thing is that this gap seems to be getting wider and wider. You would have thought that with all the focus on development and technology and all the amazing things that people have been able to achieve, we would have been able to eradicate poverty by now. But in fact, the number of poor keeps growing. And those who have, the number seems to be getting smaller in the sense that I recently read that the sixth richest people in the world have resources that total the combined incomes of governments, of states, of countries, of many of the small countries of the world. So just imagine, it feels as if resources are being concentrated into a very small network of people and the rest, well, what happens? Well, it depends on you and me, what it is we can do to reach out and help those. The statistics of poverty are staggering, but I'm not going to get into more detail of that because the cause Om Shanti, pleasant good evening. Welcome to Sunday evening talk in this beautiful, powerful premises, Shanti Sarovar, Academy for a Better World. I am sure all of you are experiencing the rays of peace, shower of peace, vibrations of this peace and happiness in these two days because it's a great honor and pleasure to have Sister Jayanti with us for this short break actually in Hyderabad, but that is also very great. So this evening we have very much privileged, very much honored to have Jayanti Didiji, especially from London. She is with us. She has actually come for Juris Conference, which happened this morning actually whole day conference from morning to evening and we Sunday evening talk whoever attend every every week we all got this special opportunity to listen to Didi and experience that shower of peace so let's welcome Jayanti Didi onto the dais with round of applause How many of you are seeing first time for Jayanti Didi? First time, physically, but in TVs and in YouTube, many of you know her. Otherwise, you would have heard her also. Um, so this evening, we are specially blessed to have Didi. And Didi is uh, the European Director of Brahma Kumaris Centers. She is the director of 28 countries in European Union as well as in Middle East and many other countries. She is representative of uh, Brahma Kumaris in United Nations, Geneva. For over 45 years, Didi has been an emissary for peace. She has a vision and experience that is truly global and deeply spiritual. Didi has a unique ability to impart the deepest spiritual truths within the utmost, with the utmost clarity. Many of you have experienced this clarity part from Didi, um, especially since yesterday, those who are attending these sessions, you all experienced what her power is, what her quality is. And her role in the university is very broad. As European director, she looks after many countries and travels the whole world as a keenly sought after speaker and broadcaster. And she has visited whole world. Recently, she has headed the BK delegation 
to the current series of United Nations Climate Change Conferences in Copenhagen, Mexico, Durban, Doha, and in Paris and Marika uh, has spoken internationally on the spiritual perspective of climate change. So it's really, really blessed all of us today to listen to Didi on the topic. Which topic we all want? Which topic? Um, healing energy of compassion. Yes. So we have Kuldeep Didi with us who is the director of Brahma Kumari Centers in Hyderabad as well as Shanti Sarovar. She will welcome Jayanti Didi as well as all of us also. I first welcome Kuldeep Didi and brother KC Jain will welcome with flower of bouquets. Jis kisi ko Hindi ka translation chahiye wo aapke FM radio se 90 tune karenge. तो आपको हिंदी ट्रांसलेशन मिलेगा हम सभी के तरफ से अभी केसी जैन भाई सब दीदी को वेलकम कर रहे हैं हम सब साथ देंगे अपने वाइब्रेशंस के साथ अभी हम सब इंस्पिरेशन व वेलकम कुलदीप दीदी से सुनेंगे Om Shanti Paramadharaniye Vandaniye Hamari Mithi Mithi Jainti Didi Ham Sab Ke Liye Bahaat Dur Desh Se Ek Sundar Message Lekar Hyderabad Pada Rhe Hain Ham Sab Ka Ye Sobhagya Hai कि ऐसी सर्वश्रेष्ठ आत्मा महायोगिनी महातपस्विनी जिन्होंने अपना जीवन हमारे एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव हेड दादी जानकी जी के साथ व्यतीत किया है बचपन से उनकी पालना में रह कर के जो वैल्यूज हमारी दादी जी में हैं उन वैल्यूज को लेकर के दीदी ने पूरे विश्व में उसको स्प्रेड किया हमारे जैसी अनेक बहनों को उन्होंने अपने आदेश निर्देश के द्वारा बहुत सुंदर जीवन प्रदान किया अनेकों का जीवन बनाने की कला है हमारी दीदी में बहुत ही स्वीट और सरल स्वभाव के हैं जहाँ भी जाते हैं हर एक के साथ एडजस्टमेंट और इतना लाइट जैसे कि एक एंजल है अवतार की तरह आते हैं और बहुत थोड़े समय के लिए अवतार आते हैं अपना संदेश देते हैं और विश्व का कल्याण करते हैं और अवतार अपने स्थान पर चले जाते हैं तो हमारे लिए भी तेलंगाना में दीदी का अवतरण हुआ है क्योंकि तेलंगाना स्टेट बनने के बाद पहली बार ही हमारी दीदी यहाँ अवतरित हुए हैं तो उनका हम तेलंगाना स्टेट में तेलंगाना गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से हम सब की तरफ से हम करतल ध्वनि से दीदी का बहुत 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 अभिनंदन करते हैं आप सब भी जो सभा में भाई बहने आए हैं कुछ भाई बहने एवरी संडे आते हैं कुछ पहली बार भी आए होंगे आप सबको भी बहुत बहुत हार्दिक स्वागत है आज की शुभ संध्या आपके जीवन में एक नया मोड़ लाएगी ऐसी आशा से मैं आप सबको ये आश्वासन देती हूँ दीदी की प्रेरणाएं आप लेकर जाएंगे तो आपका जीवन बहुत सुंदर सदा खुश रहने की कला आप सीख कर जाइए ओम शांति ओम शांति Good evening. When we hear the word compassion, what does it do for you? 
I'm sure that even just simply hearing that word allows your heart to be wider and more open and your feelings to melt a little. Is that right? And yes, it has within itself this word passion. But it means that it's passion to be able to serve, passion to be able to help others. And so normally when we talk about passion and we say my passionate interest is in this and this and this, then it's very much motivated for what it is I like and what I want. But when we say compassion, then it's really being motivated to be able to serve others with love, with sincerity from the heart. And whenever there have been examples in history of people who've been able to do this, we remember them for a very long time. And in recent times, of course, Mother Teresa has been an amazing example for many, many of us. But it's also interesting to note that many people who have served with compassion, with love, the motivation started with love for God. Because when you experience love for God, or even more than that, love from God for yourself, then this allows something to open up within the self in which you're able to serve others with great love also. And definitely, if there's a quality that's needed in the world today, I would say it's compassion. Why? Because when we look at the divide between people, the huge, huge gap there is between those who have and those who have not, um, the strange thing is that this gap seems to be getting wider and wider. You would have thought that with all the focus on development and technology and all the amazing things that people have been able to achieve, we would have been able to eradicate poverty by now. But in fact, the number of poor keeps growing. And those who have, the number seems to be getting smaller in the sense that I recently read that the sixth richest people in the world have resources that total the combined incomes of governments, of states, of countries, of many of the small countries of the world. So just imagine, it feels as if resources are being concentrated into a very small network of people and the rest, well, what happens? Well, it depends on you and me, what it is we can do to reach out and help those. The statistics of poverty are staggering, but I'm not going to get into more detail of that because the cause of poverty can be manifold, but essentially also it's a question of spiritual poverty. When there's spiritual poverty, spiritual emptiness, then what happens is that values go by the wayside and you have the sort of divisions that you see in the world today. So what can we do to alleviate spiritual poverty? Even those who may have a huge amount of material wealth may still be spiritually very poor. But spiritual fullness and abundance is something that's within reach for everyone. Physical abundance comes later, but I think that if we aim for spiritual abundance, to be able to fill ourselves with all the treasures that God wants to give us, then when we are generous with those treasures, what I've seen is that all the other treasures also come your way. Compassion is one of those qualities that everybody would agree is very much needed now. But I would also say that just as truth and love and peace are part of the foundation of human life and civilization, 
Can you imagine what life and civilization would be like if we didn't have these qualities? But equally in the same way, compassion is one of the same. It also is one of the basic foundations of human life. People have a question. What is it that the human spirit really is about? Is it that the human spirit begins its journey evil and then gradually comes to a stage where through education, culture, civilization, it reaches a point where the evil is tempered and some goodness begins to come? Or is it that we begin our journey mixed, a little bit of good, a little bit of things not so good, a little bit of bad, a little bit of good, and maybe through our journey it's a struggle between good and bad? And so what happens at the end of the journey? Do we still continue to have that mixture of good and bad? So some people think that maybe that's what life is all about. They have a story that a grandfather in North America, someone from the Red Indian tribes, was sitting with his grandson and he told his grandson, there are two wolves fighting inside of you. One is good and the other is evil. And the child looks at the grandfather and says, well, which one wins? And the grandfather says, the one who's being fed the most. And so yes, at the present time, definitely we see that it's the situation of the fight between good and evil. But my question is about the origin. Is it that originally we start that way with the mixture and we'll finish that way? or some will become good and some will become bad, stay bad in the way that the child was given the answer. Whichever wolf it is, I feed. So if I'm feeding the bad wolf, am I just going to land up in that condition? Or am I able to feed the good wolf and maybe from a state of mixture, I can get to a state of total goodness? There's a third possibility. And that possibility is that we start our journey with goodness and somehow along the way we forget and so there are a few battles we fight. The good and the evil does come up together. But because the starting point of the human spirit is of goodness, then the end of the journey is also one of goodness. And so, I'm not sure what you believe, but I deeply believe that the human origin is of goodness. Why? Because all the scriptures, all the stories and legends worldwide tell us that we came from God. We came from the divine, the creator. Some even tell us that we were created in the image of God. Some tell us that when God created us, he created us out of love and so he, bre he breathed his life into us. And so whichever story it is that we believe, but definitely there is a story that touches human hearts that yes, we came from the divine and our end of the journey will be one in which we return to the divine with those same qualities again. So when you think about those original qualities of goodness of the human spirit, which feel very natural, one of them will definitely be compassion. And there's a story of a research project that I heard last year and it was a professor who'd come from Austin University in Texas and he was speaking at a conference like this, a man from originally India. And he said that 
they had a little experiment that they did. And in that experiment, what they did was to give 50 students $20 each, and they told them to go spend it on something they would like for themselves. They did that, they came back and reported that they felt very happy about it. Then they had another group of students, and again they gave them $20 each, but this time they told them, don't spend it for yourself, give it to somebody, or buy something for somebody, but let it be something for someone else. And when they came back, they were asked, how did you feel? And the happiness that they felt was much, much greater than the ones who had spent the money on themselves. And so if I'm looking for research evidence to show that if I give a helping hand to someone, if I reach out and do something for another, then that definitely increases my happiness. Then we now have research evidence to confirm this, which is beautiful. So if I'm thinking about what it is we can do for others, well, giving money is, has got many strings attached to it in the sense that I don't know what somebody is going to do with that money. If I'm spending it for them, for food, survival, that's different. But if I just hand over something, I, I don't quite know which direction it's going to go in. And if it's not going to be used for something which is proper, what's the impact of that? Is it also creating a state of dependency? I don't know. Maybe it is. And so what is compassion? What am I giving? Maybe the thing that's needed most of all is to be, gi is to be able to give of ourselves, to give my time, to give my energy, to give of myself in terms of being able to listen to others, to be able to see in what way I can help them, in a way that's going to be not making them dependent on me, but is going to enable them to be independent and stand on their own feet. There's a story which is a little bit of a non-vegetarian story, <laughs> and I'm a vegetarian, but I'll share this story with you in its original form. They say that if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, you feed him for life. And so compassion really means to be able to help another understand the right way to go, to be able to help another deal with the problems and the troubles and the sorrows that life is throwing at them, to be able to empower them, to be able to allow the sorrow in their hearts to heal. And of course the big question then comes is, well do I have the qualifications to be able to do all this? When we talk about social work, then nowadays there's a whole process of education and getting degrees and all of those things. But I'm not talking about those qualifications. I'm talking about whatever profession you're engaged in, whatever your career or your work may be, but to be able to, within the context of that, to add compassion to whatever it is you're doing. I remember at school, there was always a question. If I'm asked to help another girl in their studies, should I be doing that? And the answer from my heart was always yes. Why? Because if there is something in which I can do to help another one, let me do that. And some would say to me, but you're giving your time, you're giving your energy, so why are you doing this? Let them go to 
a tutor. Let them go and do what they need to do. You don't have to give time yourself. And my feeling was that if I could give them some of my time and help them if there was something I understand, then it would bring me the blessings of their heart. And so I continue to do that. At your workplace, is there something you can do to help the others? Not just in terms of teamwork, and yes, it's part of the working culture, and so I'm expected to do that, I'm supposed to do that, but no, can I go that extra little mile? I was visiting somebody in hospital just before I'd left London, and she was sharing with me a story, and that was that through the night, she'd had trouble, and there was only one nurse on duty, and there were several patients. And so she needed help, but when she called the nurse, the nurse wasn't able to give her the time to help her. And she said, well, you know, even if she had just given me a few words of comfort and said, I'll come back to you. But she just said to her, no, I don't think I can do this for you, full stop. Next morning, there was another nurse who came on duty. And that nurse somehow was very compassionate. And so she didn't know the story of the night before. But this other nurse, just out of love and compassion, would pop her head around and go out of her way to help this one, just seeing that she was uncomfortable. And so whatever my job may be, well, one is that, yes, let me be able to fulfill the responsibilities within my job, but am I able to just add a little bit further and step beyond the call of duty and do something a little bit more? Probably there's always something more that we can do for each other. Even within families, I see how family situations have changed dramatically everywhere. And even in India now, more and more, it's nuclear families rather than extended families. Many reasons for that, of course, I understand. But within that, what's happened is that it feels as if everyone has become very, very busy within their own little sphere. I know in England, very few families actually eat together anymore. <laughs> And they say that when a family prays together, it stays together. Well, praying together has totally been forgotten in England. Even in most Indian families, never mind the British families, but even in the Indian families, praying together, well, I don't see it happen so often. But also, just eating together. I don't know how many families still eat together in India. Again, in Britain, very few families actually match up their timetables and are able to eat together. But just think about it, just being able to extend that time to communicate, to share, to love, it's part of family life, but family life has changed very much. And so just starting with the family, when the heart is filled with compassion, what is it that I can do to help my family? What is it that I can do to help my neighbors? Again, days of school, and there was one very interesting thing that I learned at that time. One of my friends used to spend half a day every week to help the old folk in her neighborhood. And because we saw that one girl do this, and she would share how much joy she got from her helping, just doing their shopping for them, or sometimes just walking with them to take them to the park, something, 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 nothing big, but little things that made life much easier, much happier for the old folk in her little area. 
So seeing that one person, many others were inspired to do the same in their neighborhood. Now in India probably it's not so essential in that way. Hopefully there are family members who are around and available. But I think even in India, things are changing, times are moving on, things are different. But you can see how that seed of compassion means within my circle, whether it's family, within neighbors, within the people I work with. Just being able to see if someone doesn't look as happy and as cheerful as they usually are, and maybe there's someone who never looks happy and cheerful. <laughs> so whichever way it is, someone who's seeming to be a little bit off color, let me take the time to just ask them what's going on. And maybe that's what they needed, a kind ear to bend. Maybe if I see someone's generally not very happy, again, let me take time to befriend them and see what's happening. There's a story I read a few years ago, but the story has stayed with me and it still touches my heart deeply. And it's a story of a boy who went to school and it's a real story. And this boy went to school and he seemed to be very bright, doing very well. And then it seemed as if he went in a slide downwards and teachers began to report that he wasn't turning up, he was being late, he was now looking quite messy, he didn't look tidy at all. And then the next step was that he was really actually missing school and he was being rude to people at school. And when the new teacher came, they said that, you know, be careful with this child, he's a difficult child to deal with. And they shared the story that he used to be very good, but he isn't anymore. And the new teacher thought, well, let me see why there's a change. So she took the time to actually speak to him and said, I've been hearing that you were very good, but nowadays things have changed a little. Do you know why that's happening? And the child said that nobody had actually asked him that question about what was going on in his life. And so he was moved and shared his story. And what had happened was that his mother had been diagnosed with cancer and it must have been moving pretty fast because she became very seriously ill quite quickly. And that was a time when people began to notice a change in his appearance and his attendance and his behavior. And then further down, she'd actually died. And his father just couldn't cope with everything. So the days that the child was missing school were not because he was off playing sports somewhere, but it was because he was actually at home trying to help his father. And she then, having heard the story, just went out of her way to help the child. That child grew up and became a medical doctor and invited her to his wedding day when he was of that age, he had qualified. And so one act of compassion and kindness can help shape a human life. And this is a story that you can track, but sometimes we don't see results. But never mind, let me again and again reach out and with a big heart, open heart, let me share time, give off myself to another and see what's going on in their life and if there's any way in which I can add further quality to their life. 
When my father was ill, he passed away very peacefully. He was 92, so he had a very rich, full life and went completely content and satisfied. But in the last couple of years of his illness, um, and it was Parkinson's, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that disease, but it's very debilitating and it can take away the dignity of a human being because all the muscles begin to become stiff and are dysfunctional. And so you see it gradually happening. But he had his destiny, his karma, his fortune. He was living with, um, with the Brahma Kumaris in our retreat place because he played a major role in the establishment of our centre in London and so Dadiji had asked him to come and stay with us. So he would be cared for by the community but there were two people in particular who cared for him and it wasn't a salary that they were working for, it wasn't duty but it was pure compassion and love. And it was wonderful to see how, because they were able to care with compassion, he was able to maintain his own dignity. And actually they would say that we are learning from him. And he would say, well, they are helping me so much. So it was mutually beneficial. And so I'm seeing that where compassion enters the picture, then things change in a very beautiful way and life becomes beautiful for the one to whom you extend compassion. But what does it do to me? Yes, I need to have a big heart to have compassion. But also I need something else. What I've noticed is that when there are people in the caring professions um, I'm thinking about medical people, I'm thinking about people in education, people in social work. Um, those caring professions in particular, there's an expression they use in England now, and that is compassion fatigue. Must be here too. And from compassion fatigue, it usually goes on to being high levels of stress, and from stress it goes further to burnout. And so if I'm going to maintain compassion in my heart, what must I do? And certainly I've seen the dadis. The dadis, um, this is a term we give to the senior elders, the sisters who have been with the Brahma Kumari since the founding of the organization. So it's not just a term for old folk, but in particular, those who've been with the Brahma Kumari since it started in 1937. And still we have a group of dadis who run the organization. One is 101 years old and the other one is, the others um, are younger, much younger, but they're all in their 90s, <laughs> but they're younger. And you can see that some of them came very, very young 80 years ago and the one who's now 101 came when she was 21. So they've been extending compassion and sharing compassion for 80 years without stress, without fatigue, without burnout. So what's their secret? You won't be surprised if I tell you. It's their link with the divine. In any situation, if I'm in a position of giving, well, how can I continue to give? Because the need out there just grows and grows and grows. Things aren't changing for the better. But that's also understandable. And spirituality says, have a vision of hope for the future and there will definitely be a better world ahead. It's not a question. After the night, the day has to come, and so that's what's ahead of us, a day in which there's God's light, God's love, justice and truth, 
definitely. But at this moment, the need keeps growing more and more. So how am I going to be able to give and give and keep giving? It's only possible if I find a way to be able to recharge myself. It can't happen otherwise. And the way to be able to recharge is through the connection with the one. And so Raj Yoga, Yoga, Union, and Raja, the highest of all yogas, Yoga with the Supreme. When I connect with the one, I'm able to draw all that I need from the one and fill myself. And if I don't have access to that unlimited source, then I very quickly run out. Whether it's running out of patience, whether it's running out of love, whether it's running out of the capacity to tolerate, whether it's running out of any of the qualities we would say are important values in life. So, if I make sure that I stay connected and I stay full, then my reservoir is constantly being replenished and so whatever is the need that's in front of me, I'm able to respond to that. And if I don't ensure that I myself am full and fulfilled, then I'm going to get to a point of fatigue and stress and who knows, even burnout. And so those who are able to maintain the spirit of care and giving are souls who are able to understand that they need to make time for themselves. Again, when we begin to think of others, spirituality says everything starts inside. It starts with myself. So is there something that I need to do to be able to express compassion for myself? Yes, definitely. Begin with being able to sustain your own inner goodness. And if I don't do that on a daily basis, not just sometimes, but every day is a situation of giving in some form or another. And so every day, I need to be able to recharge and refill. And so compassion also begins with compassion for the self. And it means that I have to make time for myself. If I don't make time for myself, I'm going to run dry. Making time for the self for silence, for meditation, to be able to fill myself with thoughts of inspiration. And maybe that comes from some scriptural source, maybe it comes from other material, some teachings, whatever. But just silence by itself also isn't always enough. I need inspirational thoughts that are very positive, very powerful to be able to move my mind in the right direction. And once my mind has started to move in the right direction with pure, positive, powerful thoughts, then I'm able to allow it to go into that space of silence in which silence is meaningful and silence is fulfilling. Empty silence is not very useful. In fact, if I just say, I'm going to stop thinking, probably what would happen, you know what will happen? All the thoughts of sorrow that you carry within yourself are the things that will come out first, because you're giving space. And maybe this is also why we don't give ourselves space for silence. I was with Gracia Mich Michelle some time ago, um, the woman who um, was the second wife for President Mandela. And she told me an interesting story. She said that 
she doesn't like to sit in silence because when she sat in silence then she would go back into the past at the time when her husband was assassinated. He had been president of Mozambique and had died in circumstances that were very suspicious and she said that that scene of tragedy would come into her mind. And she didn't want to try sitting in silence. And we said to her, okay, we understand because that's how the human mind works. When I give myself space, empty it of all the things I have to do, lots of things to be done usually, doing, 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 but okay, I've stopped now, there's a space. And if I give myself that space without knowing what to do in it, then the memories of sorrow start coming up and they take over. But that's not meditation. Yes, I need to spend time clearing the memories of the past to remove the sorrow that I carry, but that's a different process. Meditation means actually being able to think about aspects of truth the truth of the inner self, the soul, the truth about the original qualities of the self, the truth about the divine, my relationship with the divine, the qualities of the divine, and to let your mind be guided into that state where it's then able to focus on the divine and in that silence it's able to draw what it needs. And so when we actually took her into that silence, giving her the sort of commentary that we usually do with Raj Yoga meditation. She was able to go into it so deeply, so sweetly, and have such a sweet experience that she didn't want to come out of it. So I need to know how to go into silence and how to be able to recharge my battery and then to know that if I want to progress spiritually or even emotionally in life, I can only do that when I have the blessings of others. Daddy Janki, the lady who's now 101, and it was mentioned that I had this amazing fortune of actually living with her for 40 years while she was staying in London and then she moved back to India to start a new job, age 92. Would you believe it? <laughs> That's exactly what happened, because she'd been the additional head of the organization, then she became the head of the organization about 10 years ago. So, she always told me that, because she's gone through many, many illnesses, but yet she's still alive and still serving today and so something's keeping her going and she always says that when I go through the illnesses that I've been through I keep a formula in my mind always and that is 5% I take help from doctors the medication they give me and I'm very disciplined with the medication they give me I make sure I take it I'm a compliant patient, but then 45% comes from the blessings of others when you've served them, and 50% comes from God. And this is how I keep myself going. And if you can keep yourself going with an intellect that's clear till that age, it must be a formula that works, right? So, serving others means to claim blessings from them and definitely it helps you physically in terms of long life, in terms of emotionally, but also definitely it carries you forward spiritually. And so starting with compassion for the self and knowing what it is I need to do to be able to keep moving forward is important. And then, as I continue to share that, 
it's also then valuable for everyone else around me. Another thing about compassion, it doesn't exist on its own. There seems to be a sequence in the way it develops within the self. And my experience is the first step is, let me learn to be peaceful without reactivity. So often we react. We don't respond, but we react. And so to change my reactions into a situation which something happens and I don't instantly shoot out, but I take a moment to reflect. What should I say? What should I do? How should I respond? And if I take that moment of pause to reflect, then the next step, whether it's sending an email, whether it's sending a tweet, whatever it may be, but it's going to be considered. Otherwise, our instant reactions sometimes causes a lot of trouble and upheaval for others, but also for the self. And so first, let me learn to be peaceful. And the more peaceful I am, the more aggression will begin to leave me. And some will say, but I never get aggressive. But maybe not on an external level, but maybe there's the irritation inside, but whatever. And so first, peace. And then, love. If I'm peaceful, I can take God's love and I can learn about giving love to others. Again, I need to take to receive and even another step there, learn to value myself and love myself and respect myself. Then I can value others, love others and respect others too. And then, truth. Let me start using wisdom in my life, deep understanding of spirituality, so that that wisdom carries me towards truth. And what will then happen is that I'll find myself becoming very pure, very clean, because that desire for truth teaches me honesty, and there's a cleansing that happens within the soul. And when there's that process of cleansing and purification that comes through meditation, that comes through pure thoughts, through good actions, all of these are part of the process of cleansing, then I'm able to have happiness, real happiness in my life. And once I've got this journey in place, and I'm not saying that you can be perfect in each step, and only then go further. But no, you begin to learn about yourself. You learn what is it that's pushing the buttons for you and how it is you can maintain more and more peace. You learn about love and why it is that you're not feeling love for another. You start checking yourself and with that checking, you're able to start changing. So all of these things go on on a journey you're checking and changing and moving. And when there's that state of happiness within, and the happiness will really be lasting happiness if you've been through the other parts of the journey. Otherwise, things will upset you and happiness will disappear. But as you've gone through that journey and begun to understand what it is that can give you a happiness that stays with you, that you're able to share with others, you then come to the state of compassion. But self-compassion means letting yourself move in this journey. Even just early morning, before you begin the day, just ask yourself, but well, what is it that I really need? And you'll begin to be able to identify what are the real needs of you, the soul. And in meditation, you'll be able to have those needs fulfilled. And through the day, having compassion will be 
much, much easier for others. It's also interesting that I found that, you know, if somebody's looking a little bit sad, what would be a human response to that? The immediate human response to that would be to go sit with them, to find out, is there something you can do to help them? What do they need? And because it's out there, you see it, having compassion for them is perhaps even a little bit easier than doing the same for yourself. But if you find yourself a little bit not so happy, maybe the people who are here, your circumstances, I imagine, are such that it's not external things that make you unhappy, so it's not a struggle for survival or anything for the people who are gathered here today. But yes, you can feel that things are not quite as you would like them to be. So ask yourself, what is it that I need? And learn to have that compassion for the self so that then you can start having compassion for others also. And it's a good way to begin that journey of compassion and to be able then to help others in whatever situation it is they may be going through. But fulfilling my own needs is only possible through the connection with the divine. Otherwise, what I've found always is that um, compassion runs dry, love runs dry, and the soul begins to feel empty. So these are the things that I wanted to share with you tonight. The power of compassion heals others, but the power of compassion brings blessings for the self that also are part of my healing journey. One last thing, and because I talked about happiness and sorrow, if I'm carrying pain from the past, what is it that I'm holding on to? And probably if I'm carrying sorrow, and it's clear, if there's sorrow that I carry, pain that I carry, neither can I make others happy, nor can I give them compassion. It's a fact. And so I need to deal with my own pain and sorrow. So what is it that I'm holding on to that's still making me unhappy and sorrowful? And probably I'll find that whatever it is that's happened that caused me that sorrow, I haven't been able to forgive. And forgiveness means freedom. It's not a favor for the other, but it's doing myself a favor. It's the way to be able to have freedom from pain for myself. And so one aspect of letting go of pain and sorrow is to learn to forgive. It happened. That was the way it was destined. But what did I learn from that? When things have happened, you don't always know what are the lessons to be learned. But sometime later, maybe a day later, maybe a year later, maybe even longer, but you'll be able to tra trace back and track back and you'll be able to see if that didn't happen like that, how would this have happened? If that didn't happen like that, how would this have happened? Have you done that? I know that I've done that in my life. Something has happened and I wasn't very happy about it. But it actually opened the door to other things to happen and other doors and other doors. And so usually there are lessons to be learned from things that have happened. So let me learn those lessons. And even if still today I can't find the lessons, never mind, but at least let me understand that if I want to be free, I have to forgive and let go. So let me be able to do that. And the power to do this, again, comes from the one. This is why in today's world, most people cannot forgive. Or they'll say, well, there's two people I've been able to forgive, but the third person, 
never. I'm never going to forgive them. It was just too much. But if there's even one person I'm not able to forgive, what does it do? It leaves poison. And poison is going to impact everything else in my heart. And so it's going to impact all the other relationships that I'm engaged in. Because it's not selective about where it stays. It impacts all my emotions. And so it's going to affect everything. And so taking power to be able to forgive and let go. And remembering that there are lots of things I've done. And if others hadn't forgiven me, if God hadn't forgiven me, where would I be today? And so remembering how I've been the beneficiary is also a very good way to be able to develop the same quality within myself. But the other thing is where, okay, I've even learned my lessons, but it still is very sad that such and such a thing happened in that way. So the healing power that comes from God, God's love, God's compassion, God's mercy, allows the soul to let go of that sorrow and be able to move on. We don't take enough help from God in our lives. It's amazing, isn't it? We seek help all the time. We want help from here, from there, and everywhere. But the one who's making it available for us all the time, 24 hours, 24-7, and we forget that it's available. Usually, when there's a situation <clears throat> of trouble, difficulty, Who's the person I think of who I'm going to call? Usually it's someone here rather than that one. But if my first thought was to connect and to take that help, that help would come instantly, really. It would be available. Maybe not in the way that I expected. If I have an illness, for example, and I say, God, take away this illness, well, that's unlikely to happen because whatever is the situation, the illness is there with me. But what God will do is give me the capacity to be able to tolerate the illness. God will give me the power to stay in a state in which I can still smile, even though there is illness, whatever it may be. So the way God helps us is not always understandable for us. But the more I explore the depths of spirituality, the more I begin to understand what God does and what God doesn't do. It's quite a beautiful area to explore. And it gets rid of superstition and it also gets rid of blind faith to understand who is God and what is it God does for us. And thirdly, how God intervenes in human affairs. At the moment, when things are very, very messy, where is God? What is he doing? He's at work, believe me, he is. What he's doing is touching human intellects to change. And this is why we see this wave happening in the world of people wanting to learn about anger management, forgiveness, these are topics that people are studying now. They weren't interested in these in a big way 20 years ago. I've seen the changes happen. And so God is touching human souls to awaken and come back to their original understanding of who they are and build that connection so that with God, all of us together, those who are engaged on this path of self-transformation can work together to make the better world a reality. And I want you to carry away this message of hope that yes, there is definitely a better world ahead. The darkness is finishing. The day is about to begin. And if I choose, I can be awake and alert and see the dawn. 
If I choose, I can stay asleep and I'll say, well, I didn't see the dawn, but if I choose, I can stay awake and see the dawn and be part of the process of recreation. But yes, every soul begins its journey with goodness and every soul completes its journey with goodness also. We go round in a circle. What I'd like us to do now is to have some meditation together and especially send out God's compassion, those vibrations of compassion to the world that needs it. Thank you for your attention. Sitting quietly, I turn inwards. And my thoughts move to the divine, the supreme. And as I connect with the source of love, of truth, of purity, of joy. In this awareness of peace, I can feel God's qualities reaching me. And with peace, my heart, my mind, my buddhi, all are open to receive all the treasures that God is showering on me. I absorb all this within myself. And now, I see that God's light is reaching not only I, the soul, but God's light is extending out into the world. God's light is reaching into the darkest corners of the earth. God's love awakens souls. As I continue with my connection with God, allowing it to deepen. I experience God's mercy and compassion for me. God offers me not only love, but also truth. God offers me not only peace, but also wisdom. I absorb all that God is sharing within myself. Having experienced God's compassion for me, 
I wish to extend that to others. God sends His light, mercy and compassion to souls all around the globe. And the power of God's compassion remind souls of their spirituality and inspires them to continue to have love and compassion. I stay connected with the Supreme. And God's compassion reaches out everywhere, helping souls understand and change. holding my connection with the Supreme, I come back to the awareness of this place, this time, and I keep this experience emerged in my awareness so that when I walk out from here, I carry with myself this light, this love and compassion. Om Shanti. Experiencing God's love, God's peace and compassion. We all feel empowered, enriched with these feelings and vibrations. Not only just with the depth of the knowledge, but with the experience. From the bottom of our hearts, Didi, we thank you for this wonderful uh, wisdom which you shared upon all of us this evening on compassion. And we look forward to see you more and more here and more, more and more we want to get benefit from you because all of us are just like Chatrak. We just want to experience the knowledge which you are sharing and which you are embodiment of. Thank you very much, Didi. I have a couple of announcements for all of you. As we are in February month and the month of Shivratri this time, uh, we have a small fair in Shanti Sarovar. As all of you know, every year we arrange a fair here in Shanti Sarovar, Shivratrika Mela, 22nd, 23rd, 24th of this month. You will get the flyers of this program outside when you go outside there. Uh, every evening we will have cultural programs and many different activities, and especially the experience of Shivratri the spiritual experience of Shivratri. And as you know, every Sunday evening, we have Sunday evening talks from 6.30 to 8 o'clock. And simultaneously, we have Bala Brundavanam sessions for kids also, between 9 and 14 years children. So you can bring along your children with you. And today, we all are blessed from God's home. All of you will have Brahma Bhojan in Baba's home. So after the talk, you all will go in kitchen dining block, uh, which is just right side from the gate 
from the right side down building, very large building you will see. Uh, you will have your Brahma Bhojan, which is empowering for the soul as well as the body. And I am sure all of you are so much charged now, you don't want to even get up from here. This is what I am seeing from here. So just with so much of love with God and in silence, we all move to kitchen dining and we'll have Brahma Bhojan. Thank you for your availability in this evening in Shanti Sarovar. प्रभु की रण को हृदय में भर लो कर लो आनन दिव्य लला प्रभु की रण को हृदय में भर लो कर लो आनन दिव्य लला महामिलन की मंगल बेला महामिलन की मंगल बेला प्रभु मिलन जग मना रहा वो करुणा कर दया का सागर स्नेह में सबको समा रहा स्नेह में सबको समा रहा आ शरण आ 